This is how to take vital signs. I will begin by checking my patient's temperature. I'm putting my side rail down. I'm taking the probe of my thermometer and placing a sheath on it. Then I'm going to ask my patient to open their mouth and I'm going to place the probe under the tongue as far back to the molars as it will go and ask them to hold it. And then I will wait for my results. Thank you very much. And dispose of the sheet. Now I will check my patient's pulse. I want to find the radial artery. Put my fingers on the pulse and my thumb behind. I want to check my pulse for 30 seconds. I can multiply that times two for a minute. If my pulse is at all irregular, I will check it for a minute, or I will listen for the apical heart rate. I must have a watch with a second hand, or a watch that counts in seconds to do this. I counted for 30 seconds and I got 40 beats, so I will double that and their pulse or heart rate is 80 beats per minute. Now I'm going to check my patient's respiratory rate. Um, to do this, I want to count the respirations for 30 seconds, multiply times two. A respiration is a full respiratory cycle, um, inspiration and expiration. While I'm doing this, I'm careful not to stare at their chest to make them feel self-conscious or uncomfortable. I counted 10 respirations in 30 seconds and I will multiply that times 2 and my patient's respiratory rate is 20. Now I will take a pulse oximetry reading on my patient. This is my pulse oximetry probe. It has a finger on the top of it and the red light is also on this side. This is the side that goes where the fingernail is. I place the probe over my patient's, patient's finger. I want to make sure that there is no nail polish on the nail. I will check my pulse oximetry reading, which is 97. Pain assessment is part of vital signs. I will ask my patient, are you having pain today? Oh, yes, you are having pain today. I'm going to ask you on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain that you've ever had in your whole life, what is your pain level? It's a five? Where are you having your pain? Oh, it's in your head? What kind of pain is it? Is it Okay, it's throbbing. Is it on one side, on both sides? Oh, I see, it's in your forehead, on, just on the right side. I'm gonna go and check your orders and see if I can give you something for pain or see if you have something ordered for pain that will help with that. Maybe I could also dim the lights and um, pull the curtain and see if you can rest. I'm going to take my patient's blood pressure. The first thing I note is that her legs are crossed. I need to ask her to uncross her legs. Sure. Now I'm going to put the blood pressure cuff on her arm. Make sure that the cuff is the correct size for your patient. You want it to wrap around your patient's arm and all the Velcro should be meeting Velcro. You shouldn't have a lot of overlap and if it's too short, it's not large enough. Could you extend your arm with your palm up for me, please? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Notice that her sleeve is pulled all the way up. You never want to take blood pressure over clothing. There's a line here that says artery. I want to line that up with her brachial artery so that I get a correct reading. I'm going to tuck this right side under her arm. Then I'm going to bring the left side up and around, making sure that I've secured the Velcro all the way up to the top. You can go ahead and rest your arm. Thank you. Now I want to take the bulb and make sure that my valve isn't secured too tightly. 
I do want it to be locked, but not too tight, because eventually I'm going to have to undo that with one hand. If it's too tight, I'll make it jump, and my needle will jump as well. I won't get an accurate reading. The first thing that I need to do is palpate her pulse. I can do that either at the brachial artery or at the radial artery. And I want to obliterate that. That means I want to compress her arm and that vessel to the point where I no longer feel the blood pumping at the pulse point. So I'm going to slowly, in very small increments, inflate this cuff by puffing this bulb very gently and quickly. I'm going to find her radial pulse, make sure that this is in the locked position but not too tight, and start squeezing this very quickly but very gently. You can see that the needle on the valve is climbing. I still feel her pulse. I still feel her pulse. I lost it. I go a little bit more. I lost her pulse at 120. When I go to inflate the cuff to take her blood pressure, I will go 30 above that. So I'll inflate this cuff to 150. I need to give her arm approximately 30 seconds to relax and for the blood to refill before I take her blood pressure. Again, I'll take my bulb and make sure that this valve is in the locked position, but not too tight. I'll put my stethoscope in my ears, and I want to put the diaphragm of my stethoscope at the brachial artery. I'm going to wrap my hands around the back of her elbow so that I can press firmly on that diaphragm so I have a good connection. This time when I inflate the cuff, I'm going to do it in very forceful, long bursts. I want to get up to 150 quickly. Now I slowly release the valve, and the needle comes down at a nice, smooth, even pace. The first sound I heard was at 118. And the last sound that I heard was at 78. However, I continue to release the valve slowly in case I hear one more sound below where I think the diastolic is. So her blood pressure is 118 over 78. The 118, the first sound that I heard was her systolic blood pressure. The 78 was the last sound that I heard. That's her diastolic. Remember, each one of these markings is an even number. It goes in twos, so it's always going to be an even number that you get. If when I pumped up the cuff, I let go too quickly, I cannot reinflate that cuff until I've let all the air out, let her arm rest for at least 30 seconds, and then try again. Let me show you how to take the cuff off of your patient's arm. If you could raise your arm for me. I'm going to pull the Velcro and then gently remove it from my patient's arm. Before you take your patient's blood pressure, make sure it's all right to use that arm. They may have an armband that says no blood pressures and no needle sticks. Reasons for this could include mastectomy, lymph nodes having been removed from that side, or if they've got an AV fistula for dialysis. Also, if they've got a running IV, you don't want to take the blood pressure in that arm. If they have running IVs in both arms, See if there's one that you could pause, flush the IV first, take the blood pressure, then you can restart it. When you're ready to obliterate the pulse, make sure the valve is tightened, but only so much that you can still loosen it with one hand. You're going to squeeze very quickly and very gently. You can see that this is going up in very small increments. I continue to do this until I've lost the pulse. I lost it at 120. I'm going to let that out quickly. Now I'm going to take my patient's blood pressure. I know I lost it at 120. I'm going to pump it up to 150. I'm making sure that the valve is secure, but not too tight. I'm going to squeeze this hard so that I get up to 150 very quickly. Now I'll let it out very slowly. I have to open it a little bit more 
a little more. I open the valve a little more, all the way to the end. 